To abide in awareness, we have to abide as awareness. And to abide as awareness, we have to deeply realize that I am not an object that can go in or out of awareness. I am the awareness which is ever present. After beginning to practice what we will cover in today's video, you will notice that your tendency to become lost in sense perceptions and thoughts will start to decrease. This whole practice of staying as awareness, self-abidance, will start to become more clear. You will start to understand more deeply that awareness is your nature, not something that you own or possess as a person. And this will help you to start feeling great inner peace and happiness. So first, let's go through a visual explanation that will make all of these things very clear. And then let's do a guided meditation where we will put everything into practice so that you can walk away today with the experience of what we are talking about. Watch this attentively for your greatest benefit. Enjoy. The state of identification is an outwardness. where we are blinded by what we see and we totally are unaware of the fact that seeing is happening. <laughs> Once again, the state of identification is a state of outwardness where we are blinded by what we are aware of, neglecting the very fact that there is awareness of it. This is important, the statement that there's awareness of it, because awareness is prior to, subtler than, the mind and the physical. It is the place from where the mind and the physical phenomena are being seen. So this completely gets rid of the question of trying to get to awareness when you have to just acknowledge the very fact that the physical and the mental is being known by the very awareness, which we are as a body and mind trying to get to. So you see how it becomes a silly concept and it gets turned upside down on its head. <laughs> Believing ourselves to be form, we try to get to the formless or we try to find the formless it can never happen. The formless is not somewhere on the other side of form. The formless is not somewhere you have to find. All form is permeated by the formless. Directions, time, space only applies to the mental and the physical. But all of the mental and the physical is permeated by the formless. Just like I can point to the objects in the space of this room. Over there is a chair. Over here is a desk. Over here is a computer. Over there is a window. And that's right, right? Like directions only point or only apply to the objects I'm pointing to. But all the objects of this room are permeated by the space. Space permeates all objects. And anywhere I point to an object, I'm also pointing to the space. Which is why you cannot find I am by looking in the physical or the mental. This is why also we are asked to let go of thought. Because you're not going to think your way into it. The very thinking is happening in the space of I am. I am permeates every thought. Without the I am, without presence, there would be no knowledge of thought. Thought would not exist. That's why in self-inquiry meditation, it is about noticing the place from where you see. It is about noticing the very fact of seeing because Whatever you see is already seen. So we may say, oh my God, I really am trying the heart of this meditation, but I'm having so many thoughts. 
but you can only have so many thoughts because there's awareness of it. <laughs> so this is really good news. You don't have to create anything. You don't have to do anything. Let the very incessant, turbulent thought activity point you to the very fact that there's awareness of it. Because the moment you acknowledge the awareness from where those thoughts are seen, you are in touch with the formless. You have become the formless. You are always the formless, but in that moment, you actually notice your formless nature. Not as a mental affirmation, oh, I am formless. No, you. it is not something to state mentally. The mind may state, I am the formless, but even that thought is a form being witnessed to arise by the formless. <laughs> How beautiful. So that is the one of the main points that I wish for us to um, explore today. And no matter how much of a beginner you are at this or how seasoned you are, you feel you are at this, just try to have a fresh approach with it. That's the beauty of meditation. Experience doesn't matter. On the practical surface level component, yeah, you can say, oh, experience matters because maybe we uh, look at the pointers in different ways and we have different levels of receptivity to it. But in times of practice, you can throw all that out the window. And we just try to be as pure as possible with the the words being spoken. And just trying to really see here and now. You know, in here and now, all your experience or lack of experience goes out the window. It's all conceptual, story-based. What experience does the now have? <laughs> The now, which is the very presence, the very uh, space in which the whole mental and physical both dance, appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing. The now, which is you, which is your being, your presence. It is an empty slate, no story, no belief. Everything we believe and everything we be think we are is only encapsulated in the mental and physical. Everything we take to be real, true, solid, valuable, important, is only in the mental and physical. But neither the mental or the physical can be without the presence in which they appear, without the awareness in which they are known. Meditation is about learning to recognize that which is most essential, most true. Because the mental and the physical, although they appear to be reality, they are constantly changing, impermanent, being perceived by that which is not changing. You are that which is not changing. That's your direct experience of yourself. You never change. If you say, oh, no, I change. I change so much in my life. You're only referring to the mind and body. You're only referring to the mental and the physical appearances that you take to be yourself because that's what you've been told and that's what you have believed. You know? So this is about letting go for the moment everything you have believed or have been told or have just taken to be true because that's just our conditioning. And there's nothing wrong with the conditioning, but it is conditioning. It is belief. So the formless permeates the all form. What we are trying to find in meditation is ever present here and now in the very sound that you hear in the very objects you see, in the very thoughts that are known, in the very feelings which are being felt and seen also. Don't look for it anywhere else. 
look for it so intimately here and now. Seek the now, if anything, because the word now is very powerful because it brings you here and now, you know? The word I is very powerful because it brings you here and now. So let's do a little bit of a guidance on that and then we'll proceed from there. The formless, although it cannot be found as an object in our experience, it is our very own being. So instead of trying to find an object, take a moment to notice your very own existence. It's nothing complicated about it. It's not an advanced technique. It's just a simple noticing. I am, I exist. Notice our habit is um, just once again becoming immersed in what we are aware of. Thoughts, right? Thoughts are the most compelling. Which is why here and now, stop taking thoughts to be important or valuable. have no interest in the content of thinking. No desire to pursue thinking. Knowing it to be of no value in this quest. In your experience, there are physical objects, which are what you perceive through the sense perceptions. There are mental objects, thought, emotion, sensation. And then there is formless being, mm -hmm. most intimate, most true. For the moment, don't take yourself to be anything that is perceived to be physical. You are not what the eyes perceive. You are not what the ears hear. You're not what the tongue tastes, the nose smells, or the skin touches. You are not the body that is appearing as a bundle of sensations. You are not the thinking which is trying to decipher this or is con confused by it or is threatened by this. You are not any feeling. You 
yet you are. Being has no name, no shape, no story. No experience. And yet it is. It's not the person's being. You are not the person that is at the center of your experience. And that person has being. Once again, stop for the moment. Stop taking yourself to be what is appearing before you. The person is a dream in which your being is reflecting. The person is the content. It's like a movie playing in the light emanating from you. How crazy threatening the mind finds it to just let go of identifying with the body mind just for a moment, you know? It's okay, you have nothing to gain or lose right now. It's enough to just be. Matter of fact, just being is all you're capable of. Other words for being are now. Notice the sense of now. Notice how the now is regardless of what's happening at the body-mind level. The body may be resting or working. The mind may be busy and turbulent or calm and serene. Regardless, it's always the now.
what is frustrated that it can't get into the now and stay there? Even that which is frustrated that it can't get into the now and stay there is always perceived in the now by that which is here and now, <laughs> which is myself. Do you see that like to again and again notice your being, your nowness, your I amness? You have to sacrifice thinking of yourself. Thinking continues to keep us in a state of outwardness, believing ourselves to be form. Thinking is a state of I am this, I am that. It has to be relaxed away from. It has to be lost belief in. The moment you let go of thinking about yourself, or in other words, the moment you let go of taking thought to be what you are, you're already here and now. Thinking is what constantly keeps creating time, space, progression, personality, past, future. Step out, step out of it. And you are here already. When you step into now, when you acknowledge the now, when you notice your being, and then you feel, you know, something is trying to get deeper into it or trying to stay there or trying to derive some benefit from it. That is also just the mind, which is perceived by the now, by you.
lose belief in it, lose sense of investment in it. It's not you or yours. Just let it go. You are not the mind for which, for whom there is a benefit to derive from this. You are beyond transcendent of such notions of gain and loss. You simply are. Gain and loss apply only to the physical and the mental, which are not me nor mine. To keep identifying with the physical or the mental is a recipe for suffering, endless, endless suffering. Begin to notice your real being, which is subtler than prior to, more essential and real than the physical and the mental. And we begin to find an inner stability which we have never known because we were only occupied with the physical and the mental. Believing ourselves to be the body-mind, we keep chasing after physical and mental pleasures and riches. They're all fleeting. They all end in death. They're all impermanent. As all the great sages and teachers have told us, they are of no real value. They all pass. They are impermanent. Like a show an appearance. When we go watch a movie, inside of the movie, the character is really invested in a certain motive and objective, you know? And inside of the movie world, that objective is very, very important. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with the appearance of importance. But ultimately, it's just a film, just an appearance on the screen. The objective and the movie world are not ultimately real. Same with the dream you had last night, which appeared in your seeing also, which had its whole dream body, dream world, dream activities, dream laws, dream people, dream places, all seeming so real, true, important. But the moment it vanishes, it's like it never existed. It was only an appearance. Yet your seeing of it cannot be doubted. The fact that it appeared cannot be doubted. So if we are trying to discern real from unreal, tr 
truth from appearance. We have to discern that which does not appear or disappear. That which witnesses the coming and going of what appears. The physical and the mental are both appearances. Very real and important for the person, which is also a physical and mental appearance. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what makes life as we know it possible. But start to see both the physical and the mental as impermanent, changeful appearances including the one that finds them to be valuable and important and true. Even that is a physical and mental apparent entity. It's also just an appearance being witnessed by you, that which does not come and go. How much effort are you making to be the perceiver of experience? How much effort are you making to be the self which knows the appearance and disappearance of phenomena. Zero. We can't even help or try not to be aware. For it is our nature. It's not something I do. Doing only applies to the body. Thinking and efforting only applies to the mind. Both the body and mind I perceive without any effort. You are already that which you seek. Don't try to find it anymore. Just be, the, be yourself. To be is the greatest spiritual practice. Just be. and lose your investment in all notions of progress, journey, motivity, gain. All those only apply to the body and mind. Let them play with it. Don't for a second think that any of those things apply to you. And lastly, knowing yourself to be the changeless perceiver of all the physical and the mental. Never fear, never worry. To get to know yourself more and more deeply as what you are, you have to embody your own qualities. To fear is to be a person that has something to f lose or gain. To worry is to be the mind which is invested in the physical and the mental, once again, for some gain. Let there be fear in the body, worry in the mind. 
you are the perceiver of both experiences. In the midst of fear and worry, notice your own formless, motiveless being. Even fear is permeated by truth. Even fear is permeated by the formless being that you are. How incredible. You can feel free to open your eyes. If you resonated with what we talked about in today's video, then practice consistently. Understand that it is not an on and off switch. What we talked about today is something that has to be cultivated and nurtured. In this path of meditation and self-inquiry, consistency with practice and devotion to the teaching is of utmost importance. And if you're unsure about what to practice, or if you want to get feedback on your practice, and if you're doing it correctly, or if you want to connect with others who are also practicing alongside of you, then join our free self-inquiry support group. It has tons of resources that will really help you. That's all I have for you today. If you're new here, please hit the like button and subscribe. It goes a long way. And let me know what out of today's video resonated with you the most deeply. I'd love to hear your feedback and insights. That's all. I'll see you next time.